Hey Benditos, Tux here, and today we're diving deep into the underbelly of this complicated game with the ultimate guide to Division 2 settings, UI, and quality of life secrets. You think you know it all? Well, think again, Benditos. Let's do it! There are other settings videos floating around, but I'm bringing you the good stuff, the hidden gems that'll make your gaming experience next level awesome. Whether you're a rook or a vet, I bet there's something here that'll make you go, huh, I didn't know that. Let's get into the juicy details. Entering dog zone. This one's for the customization enthusiasts. Dive into UI settings, hit customize HUD, and watch the magic happen. Move things around, scale them up, down, whatever floats your boat. Make the Division 2 look and feel just the way you want it. Accessibility, check. Personalization, double check. And you can even save different layouts. So let's talk about making those damage numbers look good. Head to UI settings and find scrolling combat text. Switch to floating and watch as your numbers elegantly dance on the side of your screen, giving you maximum clarity in the heat of the battle. Not a fan? No worries. Try the 2D combat text for a minimalist stream. A lot of people choose the scrolling combat text to keep the clutter away from your target's hitbox. But scrolling combat text often runs off the page, so there's also a downside. Try random sphere if you haven't done that. That's going to cluster your numbers right in front of your target. The downside to this is that it also clutters the hitbox of your target, and it sometimes makes the numbers hard to read. There's no real wrong answer here. Choose whatever you like. Hey, did you know in the testing range you can change the location of your target? These indicators here here can actually be selected just by shooting them. Not only can you toggle it on, you can toggle it off. Let's talk FOV or field of view. Ever felt like your screen was a bit claustrophobic? Head to gameplay settings, slide down to the bottom and boom, additional field of vision. Pull the slider to open up your world. PVP, PVE, life in general, it's a game changer. The pros, well, expanded awareness. Increasing FOV provides a broader peripheral vision, allowing you to spot threats and opportunities along the fringes of your screen. Also enhance spatial perception, a wider FOV improves your ability to judge distances between objects and enemies, contributing to better spatial awareness. It reduces tunnel vision, so say goodbye to that. A higher FOV creates a more immersive and natural gaming experience by preventing a narrow focus. And there's PvP advantages. In competitive scenarios, a boosted FOV can give you a strategic edge by revealing opponents from wider angles. Cons? Well, there's an adjustment period. Adapting to a wider FOV might require some time, especially if you're used to a narrow perspective. In fast-paced game modes, a significant increase in FOV might lead to disorientation, making it challenging to focus on specific elements. And the cinematic feel. Some players prefer a more cinematic experience with a narrow FOV, and adjusting it too much can detract from that desired aesthetic. Here's something most people don't discuss. Increasing the FOV in game can make elements appear smaller on the screen. FOV adjustments essentially affect how much of the game world is visible to the player at any given time. When you increase the FOV, you're expanding the viewing angle, which results in more content content being displayed, but at the cost of reducing the size of individual elements. If you're a headhunter, this is making your job a lot harder. Players often adjust FOV settings based on personal preferences, playstyles, and the type of game mode they are playing. For me, it's a balance between having a slightly broader awareness of the surroundings while maintaining the visual size and detail of in-game elements. Like the heads, I collect as trophies. And hey, don't forget you can widen your view while aiming too by adjusting the field of view settings here. Broader view while aiming provides a tactical advantage by allowing you to anticipate enemy movements and respond more effectively. The peripheral vision becomes more reliable aiding in detecting movements or threats at the edges of the screen. This is valuable for maintaining awareness of the entire battlefield. While widening your view it has its advantages, it's essential to strike a balance that suits your preferences and playstyle as extremely high FOV settings can sometimes impact your overall gaming experience. Experience. Experimenting with different settings to find the sweet spot for your comfort and effectiveness is key. You might also find that this setting has minimal impact when in scope versus aiming without a scope. And again, when it's active, you might also find that objects appear farther than without an adjusted view. Hey banditos, the community we have built together wouldn't have been possible without you. So as a thank you for supporting my channel, I am bringing you the hookup on member perks including even more Division 2 content and the celebrated gaming music playlists. If you're not part of Texas Players Club, now is your chance. Disabling the aim assist setting on consoles offers potential advantages for players seeking greater control and precision in their aiming. Without automatic resistance, players can achieve enhanced accuracy and predictable aim movements, making it particularly beneficial for those who prefer making fine adjustments independently. This customization allows players to fully control target selection. However, the decision to turn off aim assist 
test is subjective and players should consider their comfort level and proficiency in manual aiming, especially in fast paced game modes where quick targeting is essential. I am on the Xbox and I turned off my aim assist a ways back and boy, am I glad that I did. I got tired of fighting my own controller for control of my own gameplay, especially when it came to selecting targets and weak points on my targets. Aim assist would often grab the center mass or backpack weak points where I wanted the head for my collection. When you turn this off depends on your experience with gaming and how comfortable you are with the Division 2 weapon designs. I did a whole video breaking down this setting. You can watch here. I'll link it below in the description area. Here's a downside to disabling aim assist you might not know. Disabling aim assist also affects your accuracy with certain skills like the sticky bombs, especially the quick draw feature. If you didn't know, double tapping the skill button when the sticky bomb skill is equipped will fire a sticky like a gunslinger. Aim assist helps that projectile hit on target. It's easier to miss without it. The aim sensitivity settings serve as a pivotal tool for personalizing the aiming experience to suit individual preferences and play styles. This configuration dictates how responsibly your character reacts to controller or mouse input while aiming. Higher sensitivity for quick, responsive aiming or lower sensitivity for more controlled and precise movements. Striking the right balance is paramount as excessively high sensitivity may result in overshooting targets while overly low sensitivity can impede swift reactions in dynamic combat scenarios. Different weapon types may influence the preferred sensitivity setting with considerations for close quarters combat with submachine guns versus long range engagements with sniper rifles. Experimentation and regular adjustments contribute to discovering the ideal sensitivity that aligns with individual aiming styles and overall comfort. Once you find a happy place, let it play out for a while before tuning it again. It's hard to know for sure if you hit that sweet spot until muscle memory adapts to the tuning a bit. Here's another tip. If you're using an elite controller of sorts, I suggest you move these settings to default and configure your controller first to do most of the heavy lifting on your aim sensitivity settings and control. Then use the in-game digital settings for any necessary tweaks. The fewer the tweaks in-game, the better. I have my settings configured for sniping mostly, but because elite controllers can save setting profiles, I can switch to settings for different weapons quickly and easily because I've marginalized how much editing I've done to these settings in-game, which is why it's ideal that my in-game settings are somewhat standardized and suitable for all types of gameplay. So camera sensitivity changes the camera movement speed when you are looking around. A higher value increases the camera's responsiveness. I have mine set at 7. An aim sensitivity changes the camera movement speed when you are zoomed in. A higher value increases the camera's responsiveness. Also set at 7. These are subjective. Your settings are going to be different. But again, for smooth sniping, these settings have worked for me, especially with the Elite controller. But right now, I'm using the standard Xbox controller from the next generation of Xboxes. And I feel like these settings are working for me okay too. Don't forget about the scope sensitivity modifier as well. So changes the camera movement speed when you are zoomed in using the scope. A higher value increases the camera's responsiveness. Stacks with aim sensitivity. So these are working together. So make sure you adjust them at the same time in small increments. I have mine basically set at default. I like to have smooth camera movements as much as possible. Some people like to turn off controller vibration so that it doesn't distract your aiming. And if you're using the controller, this might save some battery life as well. Skills are your lifeline, right? Ever wished you knew exactly when your pulse was ready to roll again? Well, here's the secret sauce. Head to gameplay, tick that box that says show numeric skill cooldown time and Viola, Viola, Viola? Viola. Now you've got numbers counting down, telling you exactly when you can unleash that mayhem again. Precision is key, my friends. Ever wanted to know what skills your squad is packing? Go to gameplay settings, find show skills on group frame, and give it a big fat yes. Now you're not just guessing your teammates loadout, you're seeing it in action. Team Synergy just hit a whole new level. What else is cool is you can see whether your team's skills are on cooldown or not. Knowing this detail might allow you to give your team a few courtesy extra seconds for their skills to come back before you enter the next checkpoint, making your team that much more effective when you blitz the enemy. Did you know the Division 2 has a secret world for the colorblind? Dive into accessibility settings, switch on colorblind mode, and choose the one that starts with a D. Suddenly, circles, throwables, everything gets a crystal clear outline. Even if you're not colorblind, it's a visual feast worth trying. This is especially helpful in group modes, raids, and incursions. It even helps you see those incoming enemy mortars. Another form of comms. Let's explore the on-screen keyboard setting. Imagine streamlined communication, swift 
strategizing and efficient coordination during group play. By activating the on-screen keyboard, you equip yourself with a quick and accessible method to type messages directly on your screen, fostering seamless communication with your squad. However, it's essential to note that for controller users, this feature may pose challenges during combat actions, such as equipping an armored kit, executing an emote with the setting on, it potentially leads to critical situations that could result in your untimely demise. While the on-screen keyboard enhances communication, it's crucial for controller users to weigh the benefits against potential combat interruptions. Navigate to your settings, toggle the on-screen keyboard, and now you have another form of comms for group play. I have my keyboard equipped for now, but there are times when I do regret it, like this time when it actually got me killed by popping me out of cover instead of giving me an armor kit. Let's get organized, banditos. Ever wish your gear magically sorted itself? Well, now it can. Head to the inventory, press the left stick, and unlock a whole new menu. Sort by brand, quality, name, and more. So most people, or maybe even the game, have new by default. And I usually keep mine there, but I always find it really handy to change this, especially at the beginning of the season when they release a new brand or gear set and you're farming it so you can sort by name or even quality to determine which are the keepers a lot of people like to change this to grid view too i personally like it on the default view but grid view is nice you get to see more items up at once but it also makes things smaller you might not enjoy that the options are yours banditos fashionistas listen up hate that your mask doesn't always show up well not anymore head to options while inspecting your gear toggle always show mask and rock that apocalyptic style wherever you go because in the division 2 fashion never takes a day off. You can also hide that clunky specialization weapon hanging on your backpack. Select your specialization weapon, select options, and toggle hide. Now you don't look like you're hauling a metric ton of gear, and you get to show off more of that fancy backpack. In the Division 2, most dark zones will be normalized. This will also show changes to talents made specifically for PvP modes, like this shotgun, for example. The status effects are different in PvP than in PvE. Turning on the normalization stats setting allows you to see this. You can also do this from your inventory menu at a high level by selecting view pvp stats gear build loadouts in the division 2 introduce a dynamic and strategic element to gameplay these loadouts empower players to fine tune their characters gear skills and weapons to suit specific scenarios the ability to create multiple loadouts allows for quick adaptation to changing circumstances fostering versatility in gameplay moreover the feature enables players to personalize their loadouts by signing custom names and icons naming a loadout streamlines identification making it easier to switch between preferred setups seamless Players can tailor loadout names to reflect their strategic intentions. Changing the icon associated with each loadout adds another layer of personalization. It's not merely cosmetic. The icon serves as a visual cue, aiding quick recognition in the heat of action. This feature enhances the user interface's clarity and allows for intuitive loadout selection. You can favor apparel now, as well as there are filter options to help you find things easier. And did you know that you can actually save entire outfits? That's right. You could also name them to make it easier to identify which one you're looking for. So now you can change your outfits just as fast as you can change your loadouts on the fly. In your social settings, you can select who can jump in on you. You can go do not disturb a private group, friends and clans only, or an open group for anybody to jump in on you. If you're looking to make some new friends, that might be your route. Let's delve into a subtle but impactful adjustment to Division 2. The option to disable the on-call setting. Picture this, a gaming session with fewer interruptions and distractions. By turning off on-call, you gain the benefit of less constant matchmaking notifications, allowing you to immerse yourself in the game with greater focus. Head to your gameplay settings, disable on-call, and savor a more concentrated and distraction-free gaming atmosphere in The Division 2. The subtle advantages of the show connectivity info setting. Enabling this setting discreetly keeps you informed about your server connectivity when teaming up with agents in another part of the world. This will likely change and could impact your in-game activity performance related to grouping up or encountering player enemies in conflict modes. In PvP, you might find fewer agents in the dark zone at 5 a.m. on a west coast server but jump into the east coast server and a rogue breakfast is served dive into your game settings activate show connectivity info hey do you have a watch yes but that watch doesn't keep time so instead you can use the in-game clock found at the top of this screen to find out what time it is in the game exactly there are a lot of quests and hunter spawns that require you to do activities at exact times and now you know here are a couple of basics for the map if you see down below there's an instruction on how to show targeted loot this will show you where to go to farm for what you're looking for. If you zoom in on the map, you'll see more details on possible resources that you can farm for, such as food, water, or even faction lockboxes. Dig down even further and you can see street names and GPS coordinates. Did you know
know you can make your game more difficult by turning on directives when you're at your map look at global settings you can change your global difficulty from normal all the way up to heroic you could also add these game modifiers called directives you can turn on just one or all of them each one gives you 25 percent more xp up to 125 percent total and increases the chance that you'll get the targeted loot you're looking for by as high as 10 percent these are going to make your game significantly more difficult but more xp means you'll level up faster are you new and looking to farm a ton of gear well one way to do it is to farm a zone with that gear that you're looking for and you can do this over and over by resetting the control points and all the activities in that area banditos that's a wrap on the essential settings ui tweaks and quality of life secrets i hope you uncovered mm. something new and if um, you have some wisdom you'd like uh, to share with the community mm. drop a comment um, down below thank you for hanging out with me today my name is tuxedo bandito and this was another episode of the division 2 if you found this video helpful subscribe like and turn on notifications to ensure you don't miss out on the fantastic experiences waiting for you in the division 2 and if you like builds like this check out the recommended build video i have here for you if you have anything you want to see covered be sure to let me know in the comments below and thank you to all the channel members and donors who make everything possible tux nation wouldn't be without you Follow me. I get it.